So, well, imagine a world where you could learn anything you're curious about. Right? Like, why, uh, why would you have to go to university to learn about stuff you're interested in? Why not just log into this thing and say, I want to learn about this, find some other people you, you can learn with, and then figure it out together? With people who are maybe older, I would, I would say, well, same thing. Imagine a world where you could get recognition for anything, any achievement in your life that's actually important to you, uh, even if, you know, regardless of if it's a university course or not. But uh, why shouldn't there be some kind of peer learning community where you, that would help you get that recognition for things you've done out of school, in the afternoon, you know, learning to shoot a video and edit it. Uh, most people pick that up on the job, but don't have any kind of certification for it. So I think figure, figuring out those two things, like right? basically learning opportunities for anyone on any topic, um, and the other one is certification opportunities for everyone. So there, there was a string of conferences around open education where a bunch of us got together, uh, people working in the open education space, and the focus of all these conferences was production of content. Right? So everyone talked about how many courses their university has pr produced, how the medical school materials, and everyone was just talking about sharing materials, and supposedly that was going to solve the education crisis of the world. So there was this kind of nagging doubt that developed over time where we go, well, that's just the content, right? Like, how easy is it actually to use this stuff? And so, three of us decided to try it out. Uh, we picked a topic we didn't know, psychology, and uh, set up weekly calls. We chose some materials from a university I won't mention. Um, and uh, we found out that it's incredibly hard. So we ended up uh, becoming really good friends and actually co-founders of P2P University, but we learned nothing about psychology. And we, I think what we figured out in that process is that What's more important is the social aspect, you know, that bond that forms between people. Uh, and the, the content really is just the beginning of, of the learning experience. And so I think when that hit home, we decided to try it out and see if other people felt the same way. We set up a wiki with seven courses. And actually someone here uh, who was here took one of the courses. And, um, and then it just kind of went from there. So my two, I think my two favorite courses were both courses that ran in the first round and then um, ran, both of them ran again. One, one I think ran three times even. Um, one was um, Introduction to Cyberpunk Literature, uh, which actually was a bad P2P University course because the source materials are all closed, right? So if you want to read uh, William Gibson, there's no Creative Commons licensed version. So the, the course actually, uh, Remix the curriculum to include Cory Doctorow because his books are CC licensed. So they said, well, we, we have to read the classics in a way, you know, like uh, Snow Crash and Neuromancer. But then we're also going to read this other stuff because it's open. And, you know, Cor and also Cory Doctorow, I think, was becoming a new voice in that space. So the Cyberpunk one, just because it was such an awesome community of people and they produced a comic strip, it's just like a lovely little group. And then the other one, um, just because it shocked people so much, is uh, poker, playing poker and strategic thinking. And that was often used as the example why P2P University is not a serious learning environment. And that course was actually taken from Harvard Law School. And so I loved those, like that situation where people said, yeah, but come on, I looked at your website, you're teaching poker. And then to be able to say, yeah, but you know, that's the one course we took from Harvard Law School, which, you know, okay, well, it's a pretty experimental little institution in Cambridge, but still it's a university. Uh, so like that whole, like playing with that, uh, you know, what is a real university course? I love that about the course. Um, now I think the courses are a little more, most of them are more skills oriented. So a lot of web development courses, we don't have um, so many liberal, like really out there liberal arts courses, and I hope we'll get more again. We have one now, I never really understood exactly what it did, but it was like um, something really bizarre, like reading the Bible in Greek. I, I don't know, it's like it was not a Greek language course, but you were reading something in Greek that wasn't originally written in Greek. It's like, I don't know, like, but what I love about these courses is, like, you know, people are interested in that stuff. And uh, I just find that fascinating that, that you can find people who have these bizarre little interests and they come together and they work on them 
and uh, to give the, them a platform, I think, is, is cool. Some of them are absolute experts, right? So some of them are teach at university. Um, some of them are PhD students studying a topic, teaching. Some of them are completely self-taught. People who are trying to learn something can run a course to learn it. And uh, because you're not expected to know everything, but you, at least you need to know what you want to learn, right? So you kind of chart the trajectory. You say, these are the things I've always wanted to read. I've never really taken the time to do it. And I need 10 people to do it with so that I, you know, they keep me going, I keep them going, we'll, we'll compare notes. Um, and some of those courses are the most, like the cyberpunk course, great community spirit. I think sometimes having the expert in the room actually hurts the community spirit. Um, in some other courses, like the tech courses, people, people often don't have, like they don't have the typical credentials, like they're not professors, but they will have, you know, 10 years experience in the open source community, they'll be co-authors of some, you know, uh, technology standard. So they are respected experts in a way, but they're not, they wouldn't be a, uh, they wouldn't, they would never get the job in the university to teach that course. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think the, the expertise really lies in the group. I think that's the, that is the message that, you know, everyone can bring something to the, to the conversation. And if you have someone who can facilitate that conversation, it's probably more important than having someone who can answer all the questions. Um, at least that's the, the premise. Two, so I think there are two pieces. Uh, one is we help people. Uh, so we've designed an orientation process. We've kind of created a handbook. We, we're tr trying really hard to get people who have questions about the peer learning approach uh, to have access to all the expertise kind of in the, that's in the community already. People who've run courses before, uh, people who've done research on peer, peer facilitation. So we, we really, we've tried very hard to give them the support that they need. Um, so you, you help people, so we assume that people want to run good courses uh, and we, we help them. So that's the one, one side, that's the positive side. And then on the more kind of, well, you know, some courses won't be great, uh, like how do, you, how do you deal with those? In the long run, um, I don't know if you were here, but I made the distinction between uh, Yahoo, is that how you pronounce it, or yeah, Yahoo, yeah, and um, Google. Yahoo filters at the, or the old Yahoo, at the directory. Uh, filters at the at the uh, input level, right? So you you build a structure, you look at everything that comes in, you categorize it, and you say this is good, and this isn't. Only makes it in if it's good. Google filters at the at the output level, it lets everything in, analyzes it all, collects as much data as it can, and then it pr presents it back to the user with this kind of implicit rating. So we would rather use the Google model where, uh, let's say we have a thousand courses, maybe twenty of them are are, t are horrible. But as long as I can tell the user, or I can give them some data that helps them figure out that they're awful, so they don't sign up for them, I'm fine with that. Uh, so we could show that this course was run before and everyone dropped out, or uh, these are the testimonials of people taking the course before. Um, so we kind of let you make smart choices rather than us making those choices for you. Because uh, maybe there is a terrible course that's awesome for you, right? Maybe you're the one person that will really enjoy it. Uh, so, you know, why should I? prevent you from that, but uh, yeah, so I guess that's the quality. One is the people who want to run good courses, you help them do it, and then you help the users who are going to participate make informed choices. So one concern that we've always had, which fortunately actually doesn't keep me up because nothing bad has ever happened, and uh, knock on wood, maybe nothing bad will ever happen, but is while we are fairly small, I'm worried that someone will come and run a, a really inappropriate course. Like, uh, I think David um, made the distinction between a an, um, an disposition of inquiry versus a disposition of, uh, not, he didn't use propaganda, he used a more elegant term, but basically, are you trying to like, put your point of view across or are you trying to learn something together? And so I'm worried that someone will come and run a, you know, a, hate speech course or uh, deny the Holocaust or that kind of stuff. So that's definitely a worry. But nothing bad ever, has ever happened and I think the community is kind of clued up enough now that we would see something like that coming very early and we, we would stop it. Um, the other thing I think is uh, kind of as comes with becoming more um, 
grown up in a way. So when you're just a project, you know, you, you have no funding that you bring in, you don't hire anyone, uh, you don't, you're not really responsible for anyone in that sense. And now, you know, we're, we're, we're beyond that. We're a non-profit organization, we have grants uh, that we get, we have responsibilities, you know, people get paid, people, uh, uh, people's salaries depend on P2P universities. I mean, very small uh, number of people at very small salaries, but still, it's a responsibility. So I think that has definitely changed my role a lot. And this may be a personal perspective, but, um, you know, I feel more kind of, we have to be more responsible about the future sustainability of the project in a way, because we've um, taken on this responsibility. Yeah, this, that's something that's been a little bit uh, surprising to us. How, and I think it's partly communication, like how do you communicate what, how peer-to-peer -peer university works? And it's partly just what people are used to. So we have a lot of courses where, that are fairly traditional, that are, I would say, not as peer-to-peer -peer as we would like them to be in a way. Um, and it's part, sometimes it's the course organizer who comes with this just expectation that they have to run this course like a traditional course because that's what they feel most comfortable with or they feel like that's the best way, which is fine. Like, we, we, don't, we, don't ever say, uh, we don't ever go in and say, hey, uh, you're teaching too much or like, you know, you're, like, you're, you're putting too much effort in. Obviously, you can do whatever you want. But, um, and then the, but the other, the, the harder thing to solve, I think, is the expectation from people who see that there's something called a course and they automatically assume that they will be taught something. And so we're trying to figure out how to change that. We're making changes to the communication. So we're starting to call courses rather study groups uh, or learning communities. I mean, none of these terms are really great. Uh, and then also we've changed the description on the website. When you, like for example, when you create a course, there's a little disclaimer that says what that means to create a course and what's not expected of you. And uh, we're doing the same for people signing up for courses. So, but yeah, I, I think it was surprising to us how, even though it's called peer-to-peer -peer university, people still are so used to that traditional model that there's the expert, and you learn from the expert rather than from everyone else, um, that we've spent a lot of time thinking about how to help people with setting up the structures of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, peer learning courses, how to deal with the communication issues, and yeah, that was definitely not expected. So the goal is not to replace, uh, like, I mean, it's not kind of our aim. Um, I think there is some overlap between what universities do or colleges do today and what P2P University will, is doing and will be doing more of. Um, and so there's definitely going to be some question, and I think maybe a valid question, right, where uh, what is uh, special about the traditional university um, and what is different about P2P university? And I think they are different. I mean, I think I can think of many reasons why they're different, but um, I think that question is, we're definitely asking that question. Uh, um, yeah, that maybe wasn't such a big question before, um, but you know, the same way that Wikipedia asked a question about Encyclopedia Britannica, but. Uh, I think theirs was more uh, an, a more aggressive question and a more obvious answer that the open world can easily replace the closed world. I think it's that's totally not the case for, uh, and also I don't think universities are part of the closed world. But I think it's totally not the case that P2P university would replace uh, traditional universities. Um, I think it, it complements it uh, very nicely because. The, you know, it's different. Like universities have have to have structure. So, typically, you spend four years there, and then maybe you go away, and maybe you come back. And you spend another one or two years, and then some crazy people come back and spend seven years. You know, and uh, end up working at the university. But um, so, but it's still pretty formulaic, and there's a huge amount of learning that people are interested in, and that's important. That doesn't fit into that structure, and so that's I think where I would like to see P2P University, rather than trying to figure out ways to teach uh, undergraduate calculus at lower cost than the traditional universities. I, I don't, that, that's not really interesting to us. I think the School of Webcraft, which is kind of our core uh, pilot now for web development, um, 
the the goal is very much that a year from now we have some evidence that people are getting jobs based on their experience in School of Webcraft. So maybe we don't have hundreds of people getting jobs, but like at least anecdotal evidence that we we feel confident that they, we can make the argument that that's there, and then we can build on that. But uh, so certainly in that for School of Webcraft, it's uh, giving people job opportunities. Um, overall, Pitt University, I would love to see more diversity. Um, and I guess the other thing is I would like to figure out how peer-to-peer -peer university doesn't become the uh, home of the co community, but it becomes a conduit. So the School of Webcraft is a good example. Peer-to-peer -peer university is not the community of web developers. School of Webcraft is, and then eventually Mozilla is, or you know, some other community. And, and in a way, School of Webcraft is just a way to help people take the first step into this community of people that work with each other and that um, really determine what web development means and what are the technologies. But, so if we can figure out a way to help other communities uh, to bring in more people, essentially, into those communities, I, I would think that's, that would be a huge success.